Hello guys, it's Mark, aka The Drunk Bunny, back with you again today for another new video. Um, today's gonna be a quick video, it's gonna be my thoughts on Jack White's newest album, Boarding House Reach. Now, it has been a while since this album came out. Uh, I, pr I think it came out March 23rd, today is April 8th, um, and I don't know when this video is gonna be up, so it may be even later than that. Um, but, so I just haven't had time to talk about the album. Um, you know, I always give myself some time to listen to it a few times before I even think about, uh, making a review of any kind. Sorry, I'm messing with my hair. <laughs> um, yeah, I always give myself some time before I even think about making a review. That way I can do multiple listens. Um, but I have just been so, so busy, and I'm still busy. Um, that with everything, life, life has been miserable lately. <laughs> um, I've been swamped with stuff. So, I finally have some time to sit down and talk a little bit about it. Um, I actually have a paper that's due tomorrow that I still haven't finished. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I've got just an in just like an inch of time that I can use to make this video. So... Uh, this is Jack's third studio album, uh, his solo, uh, from his solo project. He's got a completely different band, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure that everyone in his band is someone he hasn't worked with before. Um, I know Jack White's kind of, kind of an eccentric, uh, guy. He also likes to keep things fresh, um, keep the creative juices flowing. And this is definitely his most experimental album, by far, um, it's not even close. I'm actually going to grab my vinyl copy here. There it is. Um, that way I have a track list to go by because I'm going to go track by track with this. So, yeah. Um, he's someone that <laughs> he likes to say, you know, he lets the music take him places. He doesn't force the music to go in any place. Um, so... I think this is kind of the result of that process. Um, this is an extremely experimental album, even by Jack White standards. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of that blues, blues rock um, that he is known for, but it also has a lot of very different sounds as well. A lot of electronic stuff. There's some spoken word on this album, which I did not think I would like, but I do kind of like it a little bit. Um, it kind of helps with the flow of the album, I feel. Um, you get like kind of a high moment and then maybe you have a spoken word track. Just kind of mellow you down a little bit for the next song. Um, and I really do like that. Um, it's 13 songs. Uh, not overly long though. I think it's like 45 minutes or something like that. So about the length of a regular album. Um, and yeah, let's just go track by track. Uh, first track here is Connected by Love which is the lead single. Um, it's probably the most normal sounding song on this album. Um, I, I understand why it's the lead single. It's the catchiest song probably. Um, yeah, I'm not in love with that song, but uh, I feel like it's very good. Um, the, there's nothing wrong with it necessarily. It just doesn't stand out over the rest, in my opinion, even though it's the most probably radio-friendly um, I feel like there are much better songs on this album, but at the same time, it's not it's far from the worst as well. Uh, track number two is Why Walk a Dog. This is where the album starts to get weird. Um, it's a song, like the lyrics of this song are very confusing. Um, they're basically, I think it's basically a commentary on people who own animals just for the sake of owning them and treat them like property instead of their companions. Um, that's basically what I, what I get from the song, which is an odd topic for a song, but, um, yeah, it's, it's got a weird, like, eerie vibe to it, the instrumentals do, um, but I, I really like it, I think it works. Um, song number three is Corporation. Uh, when I first heard the 30 second clip they shared of this song, I'm like, yes, this is gonna be amazing, um, but when I listened to it, it took me quite a while to get on get on board with this song. It's over five minutes long, and 
there's not a whole lot of lyrics. Jack, it doesn't sing for probably over half of this song. The rest of it's instrumental. Which kind of put me off a little bit at first. But I feel like, as is the case with this entire album, the more you listen to it, the more I started to like it. So, yeah, this song really grew on me. Um, and I think it's one of the better ones on the record. Uh, song number four, Abulia and Acrasia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not sure. It's the first of the uh, two purely spoken word songs. Um, and this one is actually not performed by Jack White. I don't know who it's performed by. But Jack does not appear vocally on this song. Um, again, I think this really kind of helps with the pacing. These spoken word tracks kind of slow you down, mellow you out a little bit. Then we get to number six, Ice Station Zebra, perhaps the weirdest song on this album, in which Jack White attempts to rap. Um, the fact that he's, like, attempting to rap, I don't really think sounds very good, but the instrumentals on this one are really, really good. So, um, a lot of people love this song. I'm, I'm okay with it, you know? Um, it, it, it sounds okay to me. It doesn't sound, like, amazing or anything. And it's definitely one of the more out there songs and that leads me to number seven which is probably the most normal jack white song on this album over and over and over um to my knowledge this song was kind of like a uh, a white whale of sorts for jack white um he'd been writing pieces of this for a long time and it never really came together until this record um and this is definitely the most classic jack white white stripe sounding song on the album. If you listen to one song from this album, listen to this one over and over and over. Um, I think it's my favorite, mainly for those reasons. Um, it's what I'm used to. It's what I'm used to expecting from Jack White. Um, and it has a great, great guitar uh, part on it. Very a guitar heavy song, <clears throat> which is what I usually gravitate towards. Then we have number eight, Everything You've Ever Learned. This is a odd song um it's but it's one of those odd ones that i just love and i can't really describe why um it starts out with jack white doing some sort of spoken word like intercom message um and i actually want to find the lyrics because i think it's hilarious um let's see where those are i know i've got them there let me find the lyrics for this one, because this is just kind of hilarious, I think. So it starts out, and it's, it's like, Hello, welcome to everything you've ever learned, brought to you by... And then it goes again, Hello, welcome to everything you've ever learned. Um, and then it goes into some instrumental stuff. And then it comes back with uh, some kind of spoken word slash singing, sort of. Um, and then more great instrumentals. I really love this song. The instrumentals are just awesome. And the way it flows is just very, very catchy in the sense that it grew on me. Not catchy like it's poppy or anything. But, um, yeah. And then we move on to number nine, Respect Commander. Maybe my second favorite on the album. Um, it was the second song that was released. It has a very bluesy vibe to it. Um, really good uh, guitar solos in this one. Love, love, love that song. Uh, then we get to number 10, Esmeralda Steals the Show. Another spoken word song. Um, and then number 11, Get in the Mine Shaft, which I think is interesting. The only lyric listed... Forgetting the mine shaft is, uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> Which there's more stuff said during the song, but that's just what they, uh, list in the lyrics. Um, Getting the Mine Shaft is another song that I love, that I was kind of surprised I love. Um, it's another very eclectic, weird song. Um, has a lot of, like, spoken word stuff on it. Um, but it has, like, really good electronic... Um, sounds 
And, um, yeah, I actually want to play you guys a quick clip of getting the mine shaft. Alright, so that was getting the mine shaft. Um, next up is number 12, what's done is done. This is a very country feel uh, to it, which I usually don't like country music, but for some reason when Jack White does something that's kind of country inspired, I love it. I don't know, Hotel Yorba is one of my favorite songs, um, but The White Stripes, uh, I mean, Just One Drink from his album Lazaretto. Like, there's lots of country-inspired stuff from Jack White that I love, even though I say I don't like country. Um, and this is another one of my favorites from the album. Um, really good. It's shared Jack and then female vocals, um, which I think is kind of interesting as well. And then finally, the 13th song on the album, the wrap-up, is called Humoresque. Now, this is kind of weird because Humoresque, the lyrics to this were originally written by Al Capone while he was in prison at Alcatraz, um, which is very unique. Uh, Al, uh, the the lyrics were up for auction um, last year, I think it was, and Jack White bought them for like $18,000 or something. It was ridiculous. But um, And then he used it in this song. He set it to a Dvorak piece. So it's very slow, um, very nice. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, I actually forgot I was going to play some other clips during this, so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys a quick little medley of my favorite songs from the album. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and back to give my final thoughts on the album. It's very strange. It's very eclectic. And if you don't give yourself some time to sit down and really process this album, you're not going to appreciate it for what it is. Um, I, I felt the same way the first time I listened to it. Um, I felt like this is just too weird, too bizarre for me. It's not catchy enough. I'm not going to want to listen to this. But as I started to get around the fourth or fifth listen, I really started to appreciate appreciate it for what it was. And I really think it's one of my, um, I don't know if it's going to be one of my favorite Jack White albums. Maybe out of his solo stuff, um, it would be right up there with Lazaretto. Um, I think I do like this better than Blunderbuss. Uh, so I think uh, I'm going to give this album a four out of five. Um, I think it's really solid. I, I don't think it does quite enough to merit a four and a half, um, but I really, really do enjoy this, and um, I think it's kind of a sleeper this year. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be turned off by the sound of it, 
um, and they're not going to listen to it enough times to really understand it, or attempt to understand it, because I don't even understand it all the way. Um, I don't think anybody does. I don't know if, he, if <laughs> I don't know if even Jack White understands it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, I'm Jack White, Boarding House Reach, going to give it a four and a half out of five. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, it was a little bit jumbled up. I kind of forgot what I was doing halfway through the video, but I uh, hope you still enjoyed. Um, if you did, leave me a like. Hit that subscribe button down below to stay tuned for future videos. Um, I've got another album review coming up soon, and I'm probably going to go to a movie this week. So that's the kind of the upcoming plans. Um, so yeah, have an awesome week. Bye. What's done is done I just can't find it no more So I'm walking downtown to the store And I'm buying a gun This just ain't no fun My life has become a bore